Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining me for our daily live stream. We do this Monday through Thursday where we go over a specific topic or a book of choice. For those of you that don't know, hey, Kat, if you see me looking here, I'm looking at you, Instagram, but I also live stream on Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube. So if you like that platform, you will also see me looking here. We're going to step back and we're going to be talking about what real love really is because a lot of us, we go through these things in our upbringing and, and our conditioning that change us for better or for worse. And then we try to enter relationships with other people who have been through their own mess. And we wonder why we can't connect on a deeper level um, when it comes to creating relationships that are, are built on true and lasting love. And a lot of things that we think are love are truly not love. So for those of you that are new and joining in, hey, Soulful Stud, the book that we're currently studying is The Mastery of Love. If you haven't listened to any of the previous live streams, we've also went over Atomic Habits. We went over The Power of Now. We're going to over The Mastery of Love. It's one of, to me, the most important books that you should read if you want to understand how to cultivate a loving relationship, not only with yourself, but with other people. So the part of the book that we're in right now is going over how you can tell the difference between love and what you think love may truly is. And for a lot of us, when we go through this part, it's going to be eye opening because again, like I said, our conditioning has led us to believe that certain things that we think is loving is actually not It's unhealthy it's not conducive to creating loving relationships so this chapter is about kind of like demystifying the difference so that you can um move forward i'm going to kind of jump back a little bit from yesterday's live stream just because of all the stuff that we had going on i want to make sure that you don't miss this important message so we will be starting on page 61 if you have this particular book um, those of you that are going to be listening to the replay on the um, podcast i have the mastery of love i don't know what edition this is but it's the one that comes in like the little two box set so anyway let's go ahead and get started for the sake of time so love is completely responsible whereas fear some of the things that we bring into relationships fear especially avoids responsibility but that does not mean that it's not responsible Trying to avoid responsibility is one of the biggest mistakes that we make because every action has a consequence. This is important. Number one, because a lot of the times when you enter relationships, you may think that you, the things that you do or the choices that you make because of the way that you were brought up and the way that you were think are okay. And you don't think that they're detrimental or harmful to the relationship because maybe to you, they're no big deal, but every action has a consequence, whether for better or for worse. And what I was saying yesterday was that a lot of times we especially if we are the ones that is imparting our views and our beliefs and you know ourself into the relationship we oftentimes minimize the impact that we have on relationships with other people but when things are coming at us or when we get triggered we maximize those things but every action that you take in your relationships in your life has a consequence everything you think especially if you've been rocking with me from the beginning then you know how powerful your thoughts are but everything you think everything you do it all has a consequence we if we make a choice, we have an outcome or a reaction. A lot of the times though, it's insidious, right? You're in these relationships and you're just going about your business and you know you can maybe see something that's a little bit off or you may do something due to your conditioning or the things that trigger you and the things that you need to heal from and you think it's just this little thing and you continue to have these little red flags or these little triggers come up in your relationship with other people and eventually what does it do it starts to fall apart it starts to crumble and when it starts to fall apart and it starts to crumble it seems like there was some big momentous moment that 
hinder the integrity of the relationship when most of the time it's not that it's these little insidious little things that happen in our relationship that just like compounding interest and money they start to compound into a bigger problem down the line where by that time either you're in too deep or the relationship just seems to, you know, take a turn for the worse and you're left blindsided. Like everything seemed good. I want everything to get back to good. So why is it not good? This is probably why. Hey, Nikki and Robert, if you're on Facebook, LinkedIn, or YouTube, remember that I cannot see you unless you comment. Okay. So if we make a choice, we have an outcome or a reaction. Guess what though? Some of us are in relationships and we're avoiding making tough choices because we think that by avoiding making tough choices, then we don't have to deal with the outcome or the reaction. But as he states in the book, even if we don't make a choice, it still has an outcome or a reaction. We're going to experience the consequences of our action in one way or another. And that's why every human being is completely responsible for his or her actions, even if they don't want to be, even if you don't want to make the brave decision to leave somebody, even if you don't want to make the brave decision to create boundaries or to work on yourself or to leave somebody or to do what it is that you need to do, even if you don't want to be responsible for those things, Things, by not making a choice, you are still going to have to deal with the outcome and still be responsible for the fact that you didn't make a choice. So a lot of times to have these significant relationships that are based on true love, you also have to understand what it means to be brave and to be strong. And you all know, I always say, and to approach life from your power place from your place of centeredness, from your place of presence, because that's where life flows much more easily. Um, he says other people can try to pay for your mistakes, but you'll pay for your mistakes anyway. When others try to be responsible for you, it only creates bigger drama. And for a lot of us that run in this circle where we're trying to do better and be better. And for some of us are also highly spiritual at the same time. A lot of it is not somebody trying to pay for your mistakes. It's you trying to take responsibility for somebody else's junk to help them, to heal them. Um, these codependent bonds that we create in our life. And guess what it does? All it does is it creates a bigger drama because the person that you are trying to save from themselves is the person that is going to have to pay for those consequences or mistakes anyway, the same way that you are responsible for only yourself. Okay. Love is always kind. Fear is always unkind. And think about this. Think about if you're approaching your loving relationships with love or fear. Think about this with fear. We are full of obligations, full of expectations with no respect, avoiding responsibility and feeling sorry. How can we feel good when we are suffering from so much fear? How can we move forward when we're suffering from so much fear? And I would even say that if you are approaching your relationships where you have these expectations and these obligations for how you're going to dole out your love. And if people don't show you what it is that you want or need in the relationship, then you tend to cut them off, maybe emotionally, physically, both then you may want to ask what type of energy you're injecting into your relationships. We feel victimized by everything. We feel sad, angry, jealous, bitter, betrayed. So I think basically what he's saying is that we we get these triggers from the things that have happened to us, from our expectations, from our obligations. And when things don't turn out the way that we want them, then we start to feel sad and angry and jealous. And I'm not saying that that's not a normal human experience. But for those of you that were around for the power of now, what you have to understand is the ability, you have the ability to transcend that mindset and not let yourself feel victimized or sad or jealous. Because if you are truly loving somebody from an unconditional place, it won't feel like that, even if they're on a different path and not loving you the way that you want to be loved. Does that mean you need to stay in a relationship with them? No. Does that mean that you need to continue to show up for them in that same way? No. But that doesn't mean 
that you stop loving them. And a lot of us will stop loving people and cutting them off or treating them in a certain way, even if it's like the silent treatment, if we feel hurt or betrayed. He says, anger is nothing but fear with a mask. Sadness is fear with a mask. Jealousy is fear with a mask. With all those emotions that come from fear and create suffering, we can only pretend to be kind. And, and think about it, it's true, right? Because if you don't truly know how to love somebody unconditionally, and if you start to feel triggered, and when you feel triggered, you're one of those people that closes off, then you truly are not being kind, or we could just say coming from that unconditional loving space. Um, and you're not kind because you don't feel good and you're not happy. If you are on the track of love, you have no obligations. You have no expectations. You don't feel sorry for yourself. You don't feel sorry for your partner. A lot of, uh, we could say this a different way for a lot of us because it may not be that you feel sorry for somebody, but maybe you feel like, oh my God, I see so much potential in this person and they just won't do it. And if they only knew what they could be or how great they could be, then life would be amazing for them and in turn amazing for you that's a form of feeling sorry for somebody even if you don't feel like um emotionally like you're feeling sorry for them so in real love you don't feel sorry for yourself or your partner everything is going well for you your life is on point you're living life from your power place and so that's why you are happy you're kind a smile is on your face you feel good about yourself and because you are happy and you feel good about yourself you're a kind person and love will radiate through you some of this is my own words love will radiate through you because love is always kind and that kindness makes you generous and guess what that generosity does it not only opens doors in your relationship with other people it also opens doors for you. Love is the highest vibrational energy, the highest emotional energy. And if you are radiating love, it not only attracts other people in a relationship with you to create a more healthy bond, but it also puts you in a position where you are vibrating so high that you're able to attract abundance. So for those of you that want more money, more opportunity in your life, then you have to also ask yourself, what is it that you are radiating? Because the radiating, the overarching energy that you are radiating is what is going to, like he said, open all the doors for you. Love is generous. Fear is selfish. It's only about me. And selfishness closes doors. And I want to talk about selfishness because selfishness could be apathy. It could be that conditional love that we were talking about. Sadness and depression are more of a selfish type of and selfish, I would say self-centered, right? Self-absorbed because you're getting caught in your egoic feelings around something that's going on. So that's what I mean when I say selfish or self-centered. So you have all of these different things that you're bringing into the relationship fear, right? Because that emotion centers on how you feel and what you're scared of and how things impact you. Bringing all that into your relationship actually closes doors. So you can go into any relationship and I'm not just talking about your intimate relationships. You can go into any relationship or interaction with somebody and think that just because you're nice and you're kind and you feel like you're doing the right thing based on your conditioning, if you are not radiating love, true love, then that may be a reason why you may experience these closed doors or these negative patterns in relation to you and other people interacting. He says, love is unconditional and fear is full of conditions. In the track of fear, you say, I love you if you let me control you, if you are good to me, if you fit into the image that I make for you. I create an image of the way you should be. So meaning you in your relationships, you create an image of who you think that your partner should be, your mom should be, your dad, your brother, your son, whoever it is. You create these images of what you think people should be. And when people don't live up to that image or will never be the image, you judge them. You judge them 
because they're not what Ever it is that you have created in your mind that people should be and because you judge them you find yourself guilty guilty and you bring guilt into the relationship guilt is also one of the lowest radiating energies again you may not feel guilty like oh I feel sorry for something what a lot of these books are saying is by condition if you're judging something then someone or something has to be guilty so i hope that um, makes sense when you look at it that way many times this is you when he says i <laughs> so many times i'll just say it the way it should be many times you can even feel ashamed of the people that you're supposed to love because they're not where you want them to be and if they don't fit the image that you create, then guess what? You get embarrassed from them. They start to get on your nerves. They irritate you, especially for those of you that are trying to grow in your path. It's not saying again that you need to be in relation with people that aren't on your path or, or that you have to lower your standards. However, you also should accept people for where they are. And so I think that's what he's trying to say. And a lot of times we get a little bit irritated because maybe we're trying to move forward on our journey and in our life. And if our partner or the people that we're in a relationship with don't want to move as fast as we move or move in the same direction, then we get irritated. We get frustrated, um, sometimes embarrassed, sometimes annoyed. You lose patience with the person that you care about because they're not living up to what it is that you think a partner should be. And when you start to do that, even if you feel like because you aren't doing anything wrong, you're up here and they're down here, what you're doing is guess what? You're not bringing kindness into the relationship. You're just pretending to be kind, he says. And in the track of love, there is no if, there are no conditions. I love you for no reason, with no justification. I love you the way you are and you are free to be the way that you are. And if I don't like the way that you are, then I better be with someone who is the way I like her to be. How many of us, hey Amy, how many of us have tried to change our partners and ended up failing, right? That never works either. Again, you have this expectation of what you think is the right thing, but rather than go and find somebody that is going to meet you wherever your vision is for your relationship to be, even if you started off on the same track, you try to change your partner and you end up creating this resistance in the relationship and the resistance in the relationship causes it not to grow, causes it not to flourish, causes conflict. Because again, you're trying to make someone the way that you want them to be instead of being brave enough to understand that if you don't like somebody the way that they are, then the person that has the problem is you. You need to move on and you need to be around other people that you can accept the way that they are. We don't have the right to change anyone else and no one has the right to change us. If we're going to change, it is because we want to change. Same with your partner, same with your mom, your dad, your son. If they want to change, it's because they want to change. Not because you want them to change, not because you're trying to make them change. Because we don't want to suffer any longer, right? Because a lot of times, why are we trying to make people change? Because they're getting on our nerves. They're hurting our feelings. They're making us upset. They're triggering us. And so we want them to change so that we can feel better, so that we can alleviate that. But remember, the real problem is you having the bravery to connect to people that are more like you and let those people be who it is that they're going to be. And we will finish out page 64. If you have any questions about this topic, about real love, what it looks like, how it looks in your relationships, now that you've been listening, maybe you have questions about how you can um, bring this and troubleshoot your own relationship, go ahead and type them in the comment box while I read the last part of this book for tonight. He says, most people live their entire lives in the track of fear. 
How many people are living in fear? A lot of you, we won't even talk about in relation to other people. Let's talk about the relationship with ourselves and how many times we've had a dream that was put on our heart, but because it seems scary or we don't know how it's going to unfold or how we're going to accomplish men or we think we're not cute enough or smart enough or whatever it is, we let these dreams fade away. And so we continue to let life pass us by as we make decisions out of fear. So most people are living their entire lives in the track of fear. They are in a relationship because they feel that they have to be. They are in a relationship where they have all those expectations about their partner and also about themselves. And all the drama and the suffering is because we are using the channels of communication that existed before we were born. People judge and are victimized. They gossip about each other. They gossip with their friends. They gossip in bars. They make their family members hate each other and they accumulate this emotional poison. And guess what happens? This emotional poison from all this judgment and being a victim um, and all this judgment and all this sorrow and all this fear, we just continue to pass it along to children who then start to live their lives the same way. So a lot of what people are calling these generational curses are not generational curses. They are these habits that have just been passed down from generation to generation. At, at any time, you can choose to break the habit or break the cycle of these ineffective relationships that have been passed down from generation to generation. That is not a curse. You can easily change this if you want to. And you today and anytime you join this live stream are getting the information that you need in order to do so. So. They accumulate this emo emotional poison and then they send it to their children. Look at, you, look at your father. Look what he did to me. Don't be like your father. Or they tell you men are like this or women are like that or certain religions, right? Or certain races. We all have it on some way in our families, th this conditioning telling us how life is supposed to be. And we start to pick up these paradigms and make decisions based on this false information that has been passed down from family member to family member. This is what we do with the people we love so much, right? We, we want to, you want, we want to have people in our circle and uh, we are usually with like-minded people and so we do this to our children we do this to our friends and we do this to our partners all right so I will end the live stream right here I do want to just let you know really quickly that if you do struggle with this like for instance you're hearing this and, and you're noticing that there's a lot of patterns that you've picked up and a lot of conditioning that you've picked up that you've been trying to let go of and you're struggling with it the theme of the personal mastery membership this month is all about learning how to detach in a healthy way and learning how to let go of the past so that you can move forward more effectively so the personal mastery membership is a monthly no obligation membership where every month the ladies in the group and men, you're welcome to, but the ladies in the group, they get a new module, just something that they can work on and focus on. So each month they're becoming better. They're healing. They're moving on a path to be better people. And we've touched on things such as goal setting, resetting ourselves. We've touched on how to control our thoughts and feelings and emotions and all these different things, how to call in better things in our life, how to manifest greatness. And so this month we're talking specifically about how to let go and how to detach in a healthy way and if you want to learn more about how you can join the membership to get more support and more coaching um, we have lives there it's a really small intimate group so oftentimes I'm able to coach you a little bit you know whenever we have our live sessions so if that's something that you're interested in and you just want a little more help and more support and you don't know where to start and so you want a pathway that you can follow and then check out wherever you're watching this video there should be um, some information in the description box to lead you to learn more about the personal mastery membership so otherwise check that out i will see you tomorrow same time same place and we'll continue on where we left off bye